Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedditGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. This is definitely a very Intel-focused news day, because, quite frankly, Intel just seem to have a lot going on, lots of leaks that have been emerging over the past day or so. I'm going to start things out with an Intel rumour uh, concerning their desktop CPU plans. This is from the Chinese website Tutile. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. I probably just butchered the pronunciation, so I apologize. However, Charlie over on um, Twitter has actually translated some of this stuff and given a synopsis of what's going on. I will preface this by saying to take this stuff with a hefty dosage of salt. I'm not very uh, certain whether any of this is true, uh, unlike the Intel XC information which we'll be going into after this. So Alder Lake is apparently going to launch in the fourth quarter of 2021. It may slip until the first quarter of 2022. Honestly, I could kind of understand that being accurate, given what we know about the rest of Intel's launch plans. Rocket Link S is planned for the fourth quarter of 2020, or it may slip until the first quarter of 2021. Apparently, there have been some rumours concerning the targeting of a CES launch, and Rocket Lake S will also top out for eight cores for the i7 models. Now, that's important because the core count is supposedly going to be higher for non-i7. In other words, for i9s, the core count may actually go up to 12 cores. And to add to this, there's apparently... Um, a rumour floating around that Rocket Lake will be Skylake up until 8 CPU cores. So we can presume it's going to have 8 cores, 16 threads at whatever clock frequency, but Rocket Lake with higher numbers of cores, so that's say 10 cores plus, will use a variant of Ice Lake SP, which is obviously a later architecture. It's going to be using Sunny Cove, in other words. Which, well, it's a bit of a stretch, to be honest. But it may also explain the backport stuff. Allow me to elaborate on that. So, as many of you may be aware, there are reports, and I've also been told as well, that Rocket Lake is a backport. The problem is that there's no hard information regarding even the architecture. One source has told me that it's actually Sunny Cove. Another person has told me it's Willow Cove. However, a couple of sources have told me that uh, the architecture, Rocket Lake, has Generation 12 graphics, which are a separate die. And rather interestingly, while I've heard that from two sources, one of those claims that uh, Skylake is is what powers Rocket Lake, and another one told me that it's a backport. I went into this much more extensively in a recent video where I was really saying that the architecture that Intel are betting a lot of cash on, most likely, is undoubtedly going to be Alder Lake, uh, which is powered by uh, Golden Cove. So if you're interested in Intel's CPU roadmap, then you should check out that video. It's pretty cool in my opinion. Then again, I made it, so I would have that opinion. I'll try to remember to link it in the description of the video. So what I'm basically saying is potentially I can understand that someone who maybe doesn't have all of the information hears Rocket Lake and Ice Lake in the same sentence and is like, oh, okay, it's... A backport, then. But apparently the reason behind this is to salvage the Ice Lake dies, which are not doing too well. So basically they can recycle them for the desktop. Is that possible? I honestly have no idea. Um, because we don't know enough yet about Rocket Lake anyway. Uh, some people are saying that it's going to be compatible with the uh, Comet Lake range of motherboards, other people have said that that's not the case. So quite honestly, Rocket Lake is still a really big mystery right now. I would also be really interested from a market segment point of view on how that would even function. Like, forget the forget the technical side of the equation for a moment. Let's assume, let's make it really simple and say that they both use the same socket. The marketing for that is going to be really interesting because it's not like, well, i9 gets more cores 
with a slight difference in clock frequency or whatever. This is literally an entirely different architecture which has a substantial IPC gain over Skylake. So I'm not really confident about that rumour. However, I thought I'd give it a uh, quick mention. Shifting to Intel's graphics divisions though, and there is a pretty major leak which has occurred thanks to digital trends. They've managed to get hold of some internal presentations by Intel's GPU design team, and they've basically leaked a whole bunch of information regarding Intel's plans. Now, what's really interesting here is, while there is some information which is certainly new, uh, this basically reinforces the fact that they're going to have four separate tiles, or up to four separate tiles, I'll go into what that means in just a moment. A lot of this also seems to reinforce re leaks we've heard previously. Indeed, um, you may be aware that Ashraf, who used to be over at the Motley Fool, joined Intel. And there was a series of tweets he uh, put out quite a while ago before he joined Intel, obviously. He actually deleted those tweets, but as always with the internet, it's very difficult to scrub all references of it. So you can actually Google something like uh, Ashraf, Intel, graphics, uh, Twitter leaks, and you'll find multiple references. I'll try to remember to plonk them on the internet. And even back then, he actually said that Intel's uh, GPUs would potentially be in MCP, um, and multi-chip processors, and we would see between two to four dies depending upon the configuration. So the reason that that's so interesting is because this seems to correspond rather well with what we have here. Um, now, uh, looking at the ATS enablement platforms, and you can see that the input voltage, there's 12, 12, and 48. And we can also see the TDP, which is under wattage, of course, 75, 100, 300, and then 4, 500. So the one which has 48 for its input voltage, and it has four tiles which are um, comprised of the GPU, that does not actually mean a consumer-facing GPU. That specific uh, card is purely for the data center. And you can tell that simply because of the uh, of the input voltage. However, the other two are potential candidates for gaming cards. So what exactly is a tile? Well, essentially a tile equals a chiplet, in essence. So they're basically just thrown together. So with uh, one single tile, we have 128 execution units. This is actually more than DG1. DG1 is a software development vehicle. As I've mentioned, it's specifically designed to enable developers to actually understand the graphics architecture itself and not indicative of final performance. But the long story short is that DG1 has just 96 execution units, but um, the single tile variant has 128. So obviously that's considerably more. And supposedly, that's going to comprise cards which are going to be targeting kind of mid-ish range, low to mid-range in terms of performance. But two tiles, which would once again be 256 execution units because it's two times 128, that would be a card which is probably capable of targeting the uh, mid to high range. Now, I've personally heard that these cards are going to be probably around RTX 2070 in performance, although that information is quite old now, so potentially that's not accurate, and maybe it could be a little bit more. Someone else told me around RTX 2080 performance. However, once again, I wouldn't be surprised if that information is extremely outdated. Shifting our focus to a couple of other slides, Intel's GPU usage models and segments um, you can basically see that they are essentially going for every single uh, usage possible, whether it's gaming, uh, compute-based scenarios, virtual reality, and so on and so on. But it's very unclear whether this is for gaming. These GPUs are designed for gaming specifically. And another reason that that's the case is because if we look at the... Um, what is Arctic Sound? Intel Discrete GPU Card, Graphics Accelerator, one tile client products with common die, discrete only, four tiles, HBM2E, 2.8G, PCIe G4 link. That would be kind of interesting if Intel were to release a GPU 
which would be utilizing HPM2 for the consumer, for the average person who wants to build a PC to play like Doom. If you'd be so kind, though, just to put a pin on that for a moment, because there's also something else which kind of happens to tie in with this. Uh, Rogame on Twitter, who is ever reliable, actually found a reference to ray tracing in Intel's graphics, but not quite how you'd expect. I'm not going to read it out verbatim, but the long story short is that PVC equals, of course, Ponte Vico. So it looks like ray tracing is going to be on the Ponte Vico architecture, which most likely means that DG2 will not have ray tracing support. So the reason that all of that ties together is because it actually seems to uh, go back to um, some statements and confusion which happened around mm, four months ago or so, so around October, November uh, in 2019, which feels oh so long ago in technology. Uh, so back then, there was a lot of mistranslations which happened thanks to an interview that Raja Kodori, who was, of course, head honcho over at Intel's graphics, um, basically, he was having a uh, interview and some of his statements got mistranslated. So what he basically got, uh, what the mistranslation was, is that he said that uh, the higher-end cards would start out at like 200 bucks and feature HBM2. So the fact this interview mistranslated Raja Kodori did actually raise a few eyebrows because, well, the interview was saying that uh, he was telling them that it was like 200 bucks for this GPU, which would feature HBM2, which would be like, okay, what magical realm are they procuring that uh, memory for so cheap? But anyway, of course, that that was quickly corrected and... Um, they haven't really given the specifications of the card, and they haven't clarified whether it's going to be GDDR6 for consumer cards, or whether it's going to remain HBM2 or not for consumer cards. They also seem to hint that ray tracing would be for XE, but only for professional level uh, scenarios. So, um, basically, it's almost going to be software-based solutions. We've heard a lot, of course, of Intel's One API, and they have been implementing uh, variants of their ray tracing solutions into a couple of games. I believe World of Tanks is one of them, although it's nowhere near as robust as uh, NVIDIA's solution or what we can presume uh, will be in RDNA version 2. But hey, it makes up for the CPU just kind of sitting there in a lot of games. So what does all of this mean? Well, um, in terms of the number of execution units as well, this also tells up to the infamous driver leak from Intel which occurred last year, where we saw several GPUs listed in the drivers. These dr drivers were quickly uh, scrubbed from Intel's website, but of course people had already taken images uh, of uh, what they said. And basically in the uh, references of the driver, there was 128, 256, and also 512 execution units which were listed. Speaking to a couple of chaps over at Intel, they've also said that they will be uh, revealing a lot of information at GDC, uh, which is, of course, in just about a month's time now. But whether they're going to give a full rundown of the specifications of the GPU, whether they're going to be giving like kind of like a roadmap of what they're going to be uh, attempting to kind of release or whether it's going to be more just an overview of the architecture i don't honestly know anyway i know this is a bit of a shorter video than normal but i think that just about covers the major things which are happening in news over the past 24 or so hours so hopefully you've enjoyed the video the normal stuff if you did like share and of course comment and subscribe if you're not already uh, subscribed to the channel and there will be much more content coming up over the next few days or so. But thanks very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.